Hello. It says I'm live. Am I live? Um, how are you doing? I would say good morning, but it's oh, it's two thirty where I'm at. So good afternoon. Um, I am. My name is Jennifer, and I am a hot mess on a mission. And today's mission is um, that I want to talk to you about keeping it keto friendly or just low carb, making smart choices even as we approach the holidays, because I know for me personally, um, holidays are a super hard time to keep it keto or low carb or whatever it is that you're um, kind of on, this, whatever, what's the word, journey that you're on, trying to stay healthy, trying to make good choices. What helps me to kind of stay focused is remembering that I'm going to feel like crap if I eat the crap. Hey there, Stacy. How are you? Um, I'm so glad you made it. I'm looking at your name as I talk like I'm talking to you. Um, hey, Bernie Max. How are you? Um, and so I just wanted to get on today. I was thinking, you know, um, gosh, the Easter holiday has really snuck up on me. Um, you know, my daughter has two daughters. and Well, she has three. Um, but they... Two of them are at the moment living with her full time. Not going to get into that whole thing. But um, so right now she is like doing all of this really neat planning for Easter. And um, yes, it's just that, you know, Resurrection Sunday is like, boom, right around the corner. Um, and so she was calling me yesterday. Um, I, well, my grands are in school right now, and so she shouldn't, they shouldn't be watching this, so it should be okay. Um, she called, I had my grandkids um, this weekend, and she called me, and she was like, um, wanting to know about buying baby chicks, and what they're going to need, and, you know, was talking about ideas of how to, what to put in the girls' Easter baskets, um, so that, um, it would be kind of chicken themed, you know, but something that would be useful. And she's trying to avoid getting a lot of candy, um, for them because she let them do this challenge that they had seen on YouTube, um, a color challenge. And so they got to spend some of their own money and, um, they could buy foods, regular foods, um, and, or, and they could buy one toy. Or one thing from the toy department. And um, one of them picked pink. And then my other granddaughter, the youngest, it was so funny. She didn't think it through. And she picked gold. Which it ended up okay. But she had a hard time finding like a gold toy um, and gold foods. She would get foods with gold packaging and things like that. But because of that, they got a whole lot of kind of junk food um, and candy. And so she didn't want to put a bunch of sweets and candy in their Easter baskets. And so she's coming up with all these ideas. And I'm like, see if you can buy, find like a chocolate chicken chick, even though it was candy. Um, but you got to have something chocolate in an Easter basket instead of like a chocolate bunny. See if she could find a chocolate chick or chicken. Well, mostly chicks. Um, and I was talking about an apron and all this stuff. Anyway, so... Um, I was thinking, man, I really miss having little kids. Like I have a 10 year old <laughs> and an 18 year old and they're not really into Easter baskets and really any kind of toy at all. That's just not their, their thing. They don't get excited over stuff like that. And I don't want the extra junk in my house if they're not going to play with it. Um, let's see here. Instead of sugary peeps getting live chicks. Yes. And actually she did get peeps. That was like the only candy she was going to get for their, to put in their basket um, was peeps. And she was, she couldn't decide if she wanted to wait um, until Easter or if, like the other day she was out while I had the girls and she was thinking about going ahead and getting them then. Um, but she went and talked to the, where she's buying them from. I think she was getting them from tax, tractor supply. And our, you may have heard all of the hullabaloo over tractor supply. Our local tractor supply is not putting them in those stacked cages. And those stacked cages are the way that we bought chicks when I was a ba when I was a baby, when I was a kid, when I was little. I remember going to our feed store and them having 
stacks and just hearing all the cheep, 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 cheeps, you know, in, in, in those towers and just wanting baby chicks so bad. And my daddy would never let me have them <laughs> because we were there to get feed for something else. I guess our dogs, I don't know, it was the feed store. Well, whatever we were getting from the feed store, but we would go regularly to the feed store and it just had this distinct smell. And then just the sound of all those little peep, 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 you know, from all those baby chicks. But anyway, um, but they were always in those stack things. So apparently um, tractor supply started putting them in those and they weren't doing well and there were baby chicks dying and stuff. I don't know. Anyway, so now our local tractor supply has them in the tubs with the lamps. They're not dying. They're doing just fine. Um, and are they're being well taken care of. They're at Tractor Supply here locally. Anyway, so my daughter had gone to pick them out. And so they're getting, like, they just bought a new house. And they have a full-on chicken, like, it's, it's like a chicken house. They don't have a chicken coop. It's a chicken house. It's like a good-sized barn, bigger than mine that I kept my chickens in. Um, we have two different of those, like, ladders where they perch, you know, and they have a big chicken yard with a really tall fence so they can't fly out so it's just i'm so super duper excited for us so they decided to get chickens um for this uh, this easter anyway and so that's not what this video is about this video is about keeping it keto friendly and so i wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because you know as as much as i want to take part in all of the robin eggs are my favorite at this time of year the little ones the big ones are okay but the little ones were my favorites and anything chocolate and um so we're having to get around that and so i want to talk about well look who it is hey there suburban hillbilly use an egg basket that's what i told her I was, she was like what do you mean an egg basket i was like like that big one i have i said you can buy different sizes um that's what I, that was exactly what I told her. Cause they're going to need one anyway, because she plans on getting several, um, cause she's getting them for the eggs and for it to be egg layers. So anyway, um, but I told her, you know, like the one that I have, I've got one that's just like the, the wires that go mainly around. I got it at our local, um, farmer supply store. Um, and then you can get the ones that look like little miniature chicken wire, you know, and I've got a couple of those too. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm excited for her to have chickens. I mean, the kids, the girls have always loved having chickens. One of them wants quail, but she wants to have some to keep like in the house. She wants them as like pets in the house. Um, so we're working on that. But um, anyway, so what are your plans this year for Easter? Like, do you plan on just like going all out? And having all the sweet treats are you going to make sweet treats and then try not to have them um or do you think you can are you going to make some keto friendly or low carb versions one of my favorites that i made i think i probably made it my first year um as keto or maybe my second um but easter was actually my first holiday after I'd gone keto and so it was like really important to me then because i was still like gung-ho um, it was really important for me to stick to it and eat right. And so um, I made potato salad for um, our first Easter. That was one of the dishes that I made. And, you know, I just I chopped up the cauliflower and roasted them um, in some bacon fat added some you know chopped up bacon cheese like cheddar cheese chopped up eggs duke's mayonnaise and probably some sour cream i think um and so i made a potato salad to go with like the ham you know and other people may be having potatoes i didn't have to have potatoes i had my potato salad um and there are as far as sweet treats go nowadays um, you can find some really good dessert recipes. I highly, re blah, blah, blah. highly recommend um, Keto Connect with Matt and Mega. You can go to ketoconnect.net. Um, they didn't get 
Dot-com because when they first started, it was more money and Matt didn't want, he, they had no idea how popular they were going to be. Um, and he didn't want to spend the money for dot com. So he got dot net anyway. So keto connect dot net. And you're going to find a lot of keto recipes there, whether it's holiday recipes. I mean, I'm sure they have like all kinds of stuff um, as far as holiday related. But, you know, as you know, ham is, is most people on Easter have ham. Just make sure it doesn't have a, a honey glaze. Um, green beans, asparagus is really good right now. And you can find it on sale in a lot of places. Um, really, really yummy. I mean, we've had asparagus a few times in the last few weeks. And it was so good. Um, but let's see here. What else? I mean, what are some of the things? Do you have certain dishes that you have to have on Easter? Like rolls and things like that are probably big. Um, my husband <coughs> and I have started having um, like cheddar cheese biscuits. They're made with cheddar and, and cream cheese. And they're not, they're not fat head dough. But they're, they're really good. And he makes them. I don't make them. Um, but that's one of the things that have become kind of irregular around here. And we had them with gravy, y'all. Like sausage gravy. And they were so good. But they were really filling. Um, but let me let me go to over, over here to... Um, I have actually um, done a couple of different... Well, several different recipes that are keto-friendly... And you may want to look at those to see if you can get some ideas. Um, super, Y'all, I am like super simple. I don't want to do things that are going to be too difficult. But I made like a um, keto-friendly, gluten-free sausage ball. I, one of my kids said that they liked it better than a regular sausage ball. Um, I made chip pudding. Chocolate truffles were really good. Um, two different crackers. I make almond flour crackers and then I also make um uh cheese just plain shredded cheese that you cook and turn it into a cracker um I make a cheese log that's keto friendly it's kind of dirty keto because it uses Velveeta but the ingredients are not bad um if you look at the actual ingredients I have bread recipes and um, bagel recipes muffin recipes um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, there are lots of, of different things that you can make that are keto friendly. Let me see if I can. Why? It's not letting me scroll here. Hang on, y'all. Why? 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 Let's see if that helps. Okay. Um, just different bread recipes. I have better than oatmeal, which is almost like a really decadent dessert. So if you need a sweet treat, better than oatmeal, that it, it's how it's listed um, on my playlist for, I think it's keto recipes. It's really good. It's really decadent. Um, I also have the cheese log recipe. Um, I have waffle recipes. They're really good. And you can use waffle. Some of these waffle recipes you can use as a, um, as a pizza crust. It's so good. Um, but yeah, those are some things that you might look into if you're wanting a, what do you call it? If you're wanting a, a healthy, low-carb um, holiday. And again, you can find a, a lot of really good recipes online. I don't have that many. Um, I've been focusing on other things here lately other than making videos, unfortunately. Um, but I'm, I'm getting there, good Lord willing. And it's also hard to make videos Um with my boys at home. I have one that's through with school and I have one that homeschools now because of just all the craziness. And so um, my kitchen is usually not as quiet as it used to be whenever I had the house to myself. So, um, but yeah. So does, what are y'all doing? What are your plans for um, Easter? Are you celebrating Easter? Stacy? if you're still in here, what are y'all doing for Easter? Um, and how are you doing in general? Are you um, are you dealing with health issues right now? Are you eating to improve your health right now? Or are you kind of feeling like you just don't have the time or energy um, to eat right right now? Because I know, ooh, 
that's you know i feel like that a lot yesterday wait yeah yesterday i had a chocolate chip pancake and it was it was not a keto pancake and it was not sugar-free chocolate chips um and i paid for it i took a really long nap yesterday after i had one i only had one but it's still enough to make me feel yucky um because i'd made I made because you know the kids were at Mima and Papa's house, and so I had to make I made chocolate chip pancakes for them with whipped cream and Easter sprinkles, and they look so cute. I did not have any whipped cream or Easter sprinkles. I just ate one of the pancakes. I had to see how you know how it tasted, right? Um, but anyway, so what are y'all up to? How's everybody doing on this Monday? Did you have a good weekend? Um, Bernie, are you still here? Did you have a good weekend? Um, let's see here. A basket to collect the real. Yeah, exactly, Jenny. Hey, how are you? I, I just saw that you were here. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, what are y'all doing for Easter this year? Um, I just, I loved, I, I get to live vicariously right now through my daughter who does all of this really neat stuff with her her kids and just, you know, she's extra. We talk about how she's extra and I love to be extra, but I don't have anybody to really be extra for right now. And um, you did have a good weekend. I'm glad. Um, you know, have you been, have y'all been watching the news lately? Because I, I wasn't even paying attention. And then I've seen, I saw something this morning and then every morning I watch Anthony trucks. I just think Anthony trucks is so cool. Um, and we'll be cooking. So are there still restrictions on like if you can get out or not, or people can come visit or not where you are, if you're staying home or are you, are other people coming to you, um, to eat with you? Um, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be doing yet. Um, my my daughter has a a new house it's just you know i think it would be she's her yard i think would really be perfect for easter egg hunting i think just you know but i don't i don't know what we're doing um and i forgot what i was saying oh so anthony trucks he got on this morning and and he made s such a good point if you've been paying attention to the news there's a particular trial that I guess started today. And so, you know, we need to be aware of what's going on, but we need to do our best not to buy into it and not to fan any flames. Um, I'm, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is we need to protect our peace. Okay. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of upheaval in the coming weeks and maybe months. I don't know. Um, but, you know, just because other people are up saying things, causing a big ruckus and trying to cause discord doesn't mean that we have to partake in it. Doesn't mean that we have to buy into it. We don't have to, you know, like we can read something that we disagree with and, and we are not required to engage in that conversation at all. Okay, um, we can just continue to live our lives, do what we got to do, take care of ourselves and our families and, and just move forward and be peacemakers. Um, you have a traditional turkey meal. You're in Canada. Pretty much everything is open now in your city. Good deal, um, including gyms and movie theaters whoop, whoop. Um, protect our peace. Amen. Yes. Some restrictions, little by little. Where I'm at, March 31st, which is also my husband and my 21st wedding anniversary. I can't believe I've been married 21 years. I am not old enough, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I hardly feel like I'm 30, although I look like I'm a lot older than that. But um, we've been married for 21 years um on wednesday that's our our anniversary and i'm trying to figure out i want y'all i want to find the perfect perfect gift for him because he deserves an amazing gift after the year that we've had it's been crazy it's it it was rough but it's been amazing like 
the year of the pandemic where people are just like, like there are a, a lot of relationships had a lot of problems because people were having to spend all their time together. My husband and I had the best year of our life when it comes to our relationship. Like we just, it solidified everything. And I mean, we just like, I can't even, I can't begin to explain how much better our relationship is now than it was a year ago. Like, like our 20th anniversary, it, it, our life hadn't changed yet. It hadn't like had this just nothing short of miraculous thing happen. Um, and so this year for our 21st anniversary, I want to make sure that I get him something super special. Um, and what I really want, okay, the first time after like everything changed and like I said, our, I, I can't explain it. I've made older videos about it, but everything changed. And I feel like it was almost like we went through a second honeymoon phase during last year. And during that, we also had a lot of, of hard, not hardship, really. We also had a, a lot of um, trying times um, that made us even stronger. Um, and so we went away together, I guess, in May of 2020, because we decided May, no, maybe it wasn't May, June. Anyway, last summer, we went away together. And um, it, it was like we had this newfound bond. And we went somewhere and got, let me see if I can get it on my finger. Ah! Um, let's see if you can see this. It's a stainless steel ring. It wasn't expensive, but in my opinion, let me see if I can. In my opinion, it's gorgeous. I love it. It means a ton to me. It uh, means as much to me as my wedding band, which I don't wear because I'm afraid I'm going to lose it because my fingers get big and small so quickly that some days it would fit okay. And the next day, if I do this, it flies off. And so um, I'm afraid to wear it. These stay on. Um, because I got them, I got a better size to make sure that they stay on. But anyway, so I want to get him something that's made of stainless steel. Because when I got this, it's stainless steel. And um, I, I researched while we're driving back from our trip together after I'd gotten the ring. I'm looking at, you know, stainless steel forged in fire. And that's kind of like the way our relationship had, had what our relationship had gone through kind of over the last few months. And um, when I got the ring and um, it just, it, it gets stronger. The more you beat on stainless steel, the stronger it gets. And it was just all of this stuff that was a perfect analogy for everything that we'd been through and how we, we were just kind of congealed as a couple at that point. And so I wanted to get him like a kind of a wedding band type ring that was stainless steel, but he has his wedding band and he's not really into extra rings and, you know, he's not in any kind of jewelry or anything like that. But I think I have, I think I've found what I'm going to get him. Um, which tell me what you think. I think I'm going to get him a stainless steel fire pit. The only problem with that is I don't really have anywhere for us to put it. I could get my tractor out in the next day or two and just flatten an area. And then I've got um, our, like I have these, I call them pavers. They're not pavers. I have scrap granite that's like from granite countertops um, that I've gotten from a, a granite place. Just their scraps that they have to pay to dump well they dumped them at my house for free and so now i have this big pile of granite um, and they're already flat they're already cut and if you flip them so that the slick side is down and they have that grit side and when it rains it looks like the countertop but it still has some traction to it so you're not going to slide on it um but uh you know i could use that and make a patio to put the fire pit on but he doesn't like to spend time outside is the only problem because there is something about him that mosquitoes love and he will whelp up like, like when he gets bit, mosquitoes don't bother me. And when they do, when they do bite me, it, you, you don't hardly see 
a mark. I mean, you know, I don't get whelps very often like he does. And so, anyway, um, but I want to get him a fire pit. I think he would like it maybe if he lived in New York where we didn't have mosquitoes and we didn't have humidity. Um, but we're not going to move to New York anytime soon. We're not even going to be able to visit New York anytime soon. Um, let's see here. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie Max. Um, oh, you <laughs> check the laundry. Let's see here. You did. I don't think, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you missed much. Um, get a sign for the house with your last name. Um, that's, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, that would, that would take some time to get it specially ordered and whatnot. My parents have a wooden plaque on, like on the front of their house that have their last name, my previous last name on it. Um, that's something to thinking that over i do like that idea to have out yeah out of stainless right um that's what i was thinking i mean, it would take some time to try to think i have somebody who i have someone i went to school with who does like they actually may as well get them a fire pit they they might probably wouldn't be able to afford one of their fire pits they make these fire pits that are probably like they're shaped like a globe and they're three-dimensional and there are pictures all the way around and he does like deer and flying geese not geese flying ducks and gorgeous gorgeous like fire pit things that go all the way around um but he he does steel he does you know wonder if he could do something like that for me um he could probably put something like that out in no time flat um but yeah yeah, I'm trying to, I just want something, you know, and, and the, with a fire pit, and number one, they have fire pits at, at Home Depot right now, like right down the road from me. Um, but it's also, you know, like, because it's where you put fire, you know, and like the, the forged in fire and that sort of stuff kind of appeals to me a little bit about our whole, you know, story. Um, one year... I want to, I'm trying to remember what year it was. It had to have been fifth, maybe. We didn't, hmm, three, four, five. Like, we'd been married at least five years because we lived here. And um, it was, the anniversary was wood, whatever wood, is wood five year. And he got me a swing, like the a frame kind of, you know, like a porch swing but on a stand, like on a swing set stand kind of thing, you know, it was all wood, like cedar or whatever it is. Um, and that is actually the frame, like the, this, the chair I used to actually sit on whenever I did my swing time Sundays, I used to sit in that swing out in my backyard to do my swing time Sunday videos. Um, but that chair is since like the weather and ants and just anyway, but the A frame of that chair now is the home of my quail cage thing that's that's built along it along the a-frame part and um but he got me a, a swing and i got him a smoker and a you know a pile of wood for his smoker which i just thought was genius and we had both it was funny because we both got him and they were things that we needed to bring home and and be sneaky about to get home while the other one wasn't home but so we both took off from work to be sneaky and while I was sneaking my gift home he showed up sneaking his gift home and so it was just yeah it was just we used to do that all the time or at Christmas time we would buy each other the same gift because we were trying to be practical and so we would buy each other the same thing it was like you know one of the time it was a can opener but I bought a sensible manual can opener and he bought an electric can opener um a, a set of pots and pans i mean just, just yeah we always we were we think a lot um the fire will keep the mosquitoes away so maybe he'll enjoy it that's a thought that's a thought 
Um, he and I are both, I think the word is called Wafgat. I'm not sure. Um, I have always been one, and I think he is too, but smoke follows us when we stand around a fire. The if we move the, the smoke will follow us and we'll move to the other side and then the smoke follows us over there. <laughs> so um but yeah I definitely need to see what we can do. Well and you know like they say if you're wanting to come control your mosquitoes, like take care of all the standing water, um which is which is something else I need to I need to think about because one thing I have um I have duckweed which when I checked the other day on my duckweed because when it froze I was afraid I'd lost all of it but there was still a small amount and um but whenever I went and looked there were also you know what like mosquito larvae look like in those little they almost look like tiny skinny tadpoles that wiggle and jerk around um there were some of those and so I need to go and pour out all of all of the stuff that makes mosquitoes. Did y'all hear that? That was that little ding dong sound is telling me that there's something I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, oh, I'm supposed to be working on my my thingy. So um, some of you probably already know I'm working on a paradigm to live your healthiest and happiest life um, by you know following. A, a certain kind of, it's not even, let me see how to explain it. There are certain aspects of your life. Um, in order to live a happy and healthy life, you need certain things to be in place. And usually if we're not living our best life and our healthiest life and our happiest life, something is kind of amiss in one of these sections and it needs a little bit of tweaking, a little attention. And so um, that's kind of, this paradigm that I'm working on and you know you, you look at it and you find out which of these areas are the most important to you and which ones are bothering you the most um you know some people your physical health may be the most important thing to you right now um and for some people um yeah they're unhealthy but that's not you know they they're in like a like a problematic relationship and maybe they need to take care of that before they even have the energy the mental energy to focus on getting healthy and so maybe they need to focus um on this this relationship whether it's like your your partner or one of your children or a parent or a boss or whatever it is and so depending on what it is there are things that you need to master in order to to deal with these relationships and um, to improve their relationships and and maybe um it's it's something with has something to do with communication or maybe it has something to do with your mindset you know sometimes we can have everything but if we've got a negative mindset we're not going to appreciate any of it um you know if you've got a negative mindset you may have um a a partner who works hard every day um, who does, you know, whatever he or she thinks is, is right for the family and, and is just do, doing everything that they can think of to make you happy. But maybe they, I don't know, spend too much time working on the car or maybe they come home and then kind of check out and, and aren't an active parent or something like that. And so that causes some conflict. And so, you know, we, instead of having that person to be supportive of you, maybe you, you become passive aggressive and you get into arguments and stuff like that. And so you end up being an emotional eater because you don't have that person to kind of be your support. And so if that's the situation, then you need to work on that before you can really um, be effective at, you know, losing weight or getting healthy or whatever it is that you need to do. Or maybe it has to do with um, your finances. Maybe those, maybe your finances are causing problems in your marriage. Maybe your marriage could be, or not necessarily marriage. Maybe your partner is causing problems with the finances or, you know, there can be so much. Um, but they all play in together, right? Because 
if you have a negative mindset, that can help or not help. A negative mindset can affect your relationship um, because it can create conflict and a negative relationship situation can affect your weight and your health because stress, stress is going to have a negative effect on your health. You may be an emotional eater, an emotional eater, and that has an effect on your health. And then if you're not healthy or let's say you don't feel good about yourself because you're overweight, that can carry over into your relationship and that can affect your relationship because it can affect your intimacy and that sort of stuff. And so all of these things can just intertwine and affect each other. And so that's kind of what I'm working on um, in this, this paradigm that I'm creating um, to help people break down what they need to focus on first to have the greatest impact because you know, it may be your health may be the thing that's kind of trickling down on everything else. Or maybe it's an attitude or, you know, your mindset is the negative thing that needs to be addressed that can trickle down and um, through everything else. And sometimes it's more than one thing. But usually, you know, you got to address what's really bothering you the most and what's kind of on your front burner, you know. Um, if you've got a serious health situation, then that's going to be your front burner. Um, but if it's just like for now, you're just you're uncomfortable and you're overweight. Um, but you're, you know, going to have to file bankruptcy because somebody is, you know, gambling or being irresponsible with money or being really impulsive with money. Um, you know, there are there are things that need to be addressed first. So anyway, that's. That's kind of what my little paradigm, it's not little, it's actually kind of big. Um, but that's what I've been working on here lately. And that's why I don't do videos a lot. I feel like I say this a lot um, because I just, I feel bad that I'm not here as much as I normally am or I used to be. And um, part of that, again, is not making videos because I don't have a house to myself. I've actually also been doing a lot of um, researching and studying and attending online conferences and now I just signed up yesterday I think or day before yesterday um for four online courses on nutrition one is nutrition heart disease and diabetes one is um nutrition and cancer um and then there are two other ones that I can't remember what they're about but they are they're all nutrition they're all related to um how what we eat affects our bodies and how we feel and our mindset um, and I, there were other ones I'm going to take after I'm through with these, but I know I will not be able to finish these um, in a timely manner if I take on too much at one time. So as soon as I'm through with these, I'll sign up for the other courses because like right now, I'm, I'm really in this, this phase. Sometimes, you know, we focus on doing and we focus on planning and right now I'm focused on learning and um I just kind of I go in phases yesterday um the day I had one of the I had those pancakes um, and you know it made me tired but in the midst of that the day before and then again yesterday I was binge watching um a a an herbal summit okay on all about herbalism and being an herbalist and all of this stuff and while I'm not an herbalist and I don't know that ultimately I'm going to become an herbalist, um, I am interested in a lot of the aspects of herbalism and herbs because I do believe that they're really good for you and you can heal your own body of a lot of things. Um, and so it's one of those one of those things that I think is important and I want to be as knowledgeable as possible. And they had all of these interesting insights. And so it was six, it was a six day long thing. Um, but they replayed it this weekend. And so I was listening to it. And I think I listened for a total of probably about 12 hours over the two days of sitting in. And I listened to it at double speed. Um, it was more than, it, it, I listened to it um like sped up because I can't listen to people talk slow because it just drives me insane and so I listen to them fast enough that I can still understand them 
but so that it picks up the pace. Some of them sounded like they weren't talking very fast at all. And they were already on like, you know, double speed or 1.75 speed. And I was just like, there's no way I'd be able to listen. And, you know, it seems weird because you think people with ADHD need the extra time to really let it sink in to pay attention. But we we don't. Apparently, a lot of people with ADHD listen to things sped up because we're like in a hurry all the time. Our mind is kind of in a hurry to get on with it um, or we get bored easily. And so speeding things up to listen to them is really helpful for us. And so I listened to all of that stuff sped up. But then after I was done, I, I went and took a nap and it was like, you know, a couple of hours. And my husband was like, well, you just listened to all of this stuff for, you know, the last 10 hours. Um, oh, bye, Bernie Max. Um, I'm glad you were able to be here. Sorry you have to leave. Um, let's see here. So anyway, I just wanted to jump on and talk for a little bit because I just felt the need. I don't know. Um, I just want to check in with you guys every now and then because... I miss y'all and I've been, I've been busy, but I want, you know, I still want to check in and let you guys know what's kind of going on. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid to go look, I need to go look at my, um, at my plant state. We got down to, I think 39 this morning or 37 or 39 this morning. And, um, I'm afraid of what my seedlings might look like out in my, out in my, um, greenhouse today. But I need to go do that and make sure they're okay. So anyway, I love you guys. And I will talk to you later. Bye, y'all.